Hey, Juice, the only thing better than looking clean is looking clean on your own time. No doubt about it, Big Seth, and that's why I always call my man Ara at a t Dry Cleaners anytime I need my clothes laundered or dry cleaned. Tell him exactly why you call Ara. Because a t offers free pickup and delivery at your home or office, so you've never had the inconvenience of trying to find time to take your dry cleaning somewhere. They bring it to you. That's exactly right, Juice. You can walk into their Fort Lauderdale location, but a t serves Miami-Dade, Broward, and the Southern Palm Beaches with their convenient pickup and delivery services, which also include alterations, shoe repair, and more. And A&T is family-owned company, and they've been in business since 1980. 1980. Yeah, and you know what? That means customer service is their priority. So call Ara today at 954-610-9383. That's his personal cell we're giving you. Or you can visit drycleanertoyou.com to start making your life and your dry cleaning a lot easier. And make sure you tell them that the fish tank sent you, because Ara, my man, is giving our listeners 50% off your first order. How much? 50. Half. Seth. Half and 25% off any dry cleaning services after that. ANT Dry Cleaning, the official dry cleaners of the fish tank. You're now diving into the fish tank. Sitting down with Seth Living, Seth. OJ, Juice, Juice Man, ooh, and this is strictly for them true fans, yeah. golf fans, number one, one, of course y'all, this ain't no ordinary sports talk, I'm up in that fish tank. Welcome back to the fish tank, Seth Levitt, none other than OJ McDuffie in the Shula's Hotel Golf Club. Club Juice. How you doing, man? What's up, Big Seth? I'm doing all, You know, it's been a long day. I know we're supposed to have kind of the whole hidden behind the scenes. We're not. This is supposed to look <laughs> like we just found these guys the day before we posted this. But, you know, Shula's Hotel has allowed us to hang out here. It's Dolphins Alumni Weekend. Amazing list of guys that have come through here. And we are capturing as many of them as we can so that we can make it through this season and, yeah. and, and honor our weekly commitment to our listeners. But uh, I know we got to get you out of here soon. But the door opened up, the lights were behind him, it was something like out of a movie, and in came Kendall Newson, right off the boat, with fishing rod in his hand, the whole thing. Kendall, what's up, man? What's going on, Seth, man? OJ, man, thanks for having me on the show today. Shoot, I'm in the building, man. You know, right. You're in the tank. Yeah, You're in the tank. tank. I'm in the fish tank, you know. I'm the fishing kid, I'm the fishing wide receiver over here at the Miami Dolphins, you know. Everybody know me fishing all the time, man. What better way to start on a Saturday, football Saturday, in the fish tank? That's right. That's <laughs> exactly right. right. That's right. And wide out. You know, you got to give us that wide out shout out. I was yeah. waiting for it to yeah, happen. No, we, we I figured that out. was your role. They're, they're always trying to keep us wide outs out, man. You know what I mean? So now we got the man, wide outs. Man, we've had a Ronde. We've had Nat. Uh, don't, don't, we've uh, had hey, 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 I'm talking Marty about, Booker. I'm talking about today. Marty Booker. I'm talking about today. <laughs> today, first wide out for today. Today. And Juice will always tell you we finally got the right position. <laughs> that's, in the that's right, man. You know the wide outs are, I mean, that's hey, Miami Dolphin that's football right, right there. We had a straw that stirs your drink. That's right, damn it. <laughs> you know that, right? You know that, right? Uh, yeah, he's like, yeah, my boy going to say no <laughs> at this point. <laughs> Juice will rip the headphones off. This shit's over. To my man, Kendall's from... Decatur, right? Decatur, yeah. Georgia. My brother lives in Decatur now. Yeah, man. Decatur, Georgia is where I grew up, you know, playing football. I mean, Decatur is an awesome town, you know, play football, basketball, ran track. Three what sport. high school? Yeah. yeah, Columbia High School. Okay. You know, in the inner city, you got all these schools around you. You got South DeKalb, you got Towers, you got Columbia High School. Where's Redan? Redan is like, it's maybe four or five miles from, from my school, okay. Columbia High School. My, yeah. my best friend from college claims Redan. He said he's from Decatur. Yeah, Decatur is where it's greater <laughs> Redan, but, you know. Okay, all right. Well, we, we busting Redan. Sorry, Sal. Yeah. Sorry, Sal. <laughs> <laughs> my bad, Sal. We, we don't even know where Redan at, really. Right. They don't even see, don't even see <laughs> no, it. So you were just yeah. making some shit up? Yeah, it's about well, four miles. It's, it's about four miles that way, but it's the it's the wrong way. It's oh, the wrong okay. direction. <laughs> that way. It's that way. That way. <laughs> all right, all right. I just wanted to know. Yeah. <laughs> Good stuff, man. Good stuff. Too funny. Too funny. So, you know, Juice, we've had some guys, I mean, all, all different stories, uh, a lot of different stories of how guys made it to the league. And not everybody, Kendall, not everybody gets picked in the first round. Nobody, everybody and they can't fly be the jet. Oh, right. Man, not everybody can be OJ McDuffie, like, Stu the, picks you up with a tuxedo. Yeah. and the whole, Not everybody can do that. Damn, the setup. The and so setup. some guys – have a different journey. You know, we had Aronde in here who had an amazing journey. He had like 77 games before he played his first off yeah. right in a wow. row yeah. and no no off season. And Kendall, your journey was a little bit, you know, th there was that grind. Yeah, it was a, it was a big grind. You know, once I first, you know, came into the league, I went to Middle Tennessee State, you know, coming out of high school. You know, everybody wanted to wanted me to go to Georgia, but I had a coach that was there every day at spring camp, spring practice that was from Middle Tennessee State. 
And I was like, you know, at signing day, you know, Georgia was there. I had some other teams there. And I was like, I'm going to MTSU play football, right? They was uh, D2 when I first got there. Uh, we playing TSU. We playing uh, Arkansas, Pine Bluff. We playing all kind of schools like that. And then the next year, we jump up to D1. You play. brought them up. You elevated yeah. the well, program. You know, I was. I knew they was going D1, but when we jumped ah, up to go okay. D1, we playing LSU, Alabama, <laughs> Mississippi. Every game was like 73. Oh, man. <laughs> I'm like, so. and then, you know, you hit Middle Tennessee State and MTSU or Mississippi State, and I'm scoring, you know, two touchdowns or whatever. And right, now, getting yours, though. Yeah, I'm getting mine. I'm going to get mine. You right. already know. Right. So, you know, I got my I got my touchdowns in, got my catches in. You know, I led the team, you know, uh, most receiving yards, uh, catches, reception in a year, you know, receptions a game. And, you know, just went from there. Got started getting looked for um, – the NFL draft, you know, teams start to look at me because they're like, who's this little skinny guy catching on this number one DB? He right. was lanky, wasn't he? Yeah, like, <laughs> you're looking, you're you're looking at lanky, the DBs man. Yeah. and you're seeing you doing business yeah, against Yeah, them. I'm doing business, man. So, you know, it's, it started to work out good for me. And then, you know, I had a coach that told me, he, he, he pulled me to the side. He said, hey, man, you can make it to the league. I played five years. You got what it takes. You just got to, you got to chime in. You got to do, you got to do the work. So, you know, I made up in my mind early. That, you know, before I went through the gates of practice, I was like, well, shit, nothing else can matter right now. You know, when I walk through that door of practice, this is going to be the best day of my day. So, you know, I took that attitude out there, man, and just and just went to fight, you know, went to fight for the team, fight for the guys around me, you know, and then it propelled me to get drafted. So that was that was kind of my college career, you know. Yeah, you made most of, most of the situation no matter yeah. what, and then, you know, if you do yep. your thing. Yeah, you know, then hopefully you lift some other guys up. And oh yeah, then you get your opportunity. Yeah, yeah, man. We 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 were struggling. You know, we we won. We we I led our team to the championship um, at MTSU, but it was just the bigger schools. You know, yeah. we we I mean, shoot, we right. playing Illinois. These right. guys, well, they're feeding you to the, right. to the yeah. Lions at right. that yeah. point, man. You know, they making their money. That's what <laughs> right. I was gonna say. That's a payday. That's that that right. has nothing to do about you. It, yeah. Literally, yeah. They're, they're just that's a cash grab. Yeah, yeah. that's what that is. Yeah. So, so two thousand two, you get selected in the seventh round. Yeah. And, and there the Jacksonville Jaguars call your name? Yes, man. I remember sitting at home, sitting there going crazy. I think I'm supposed to be picked in fifth round or fourth round, right. third round. I'm going crazy at home. Family everywhere. Right. Girlfriend keeps scratching me on my back. I'm like, back up. You know, I'm getting <laughs> mad at her all the time, you know. But, you know, I finally got the Jaguars <laughs> called me. I finally, I finally got drafted. I'm sitting there like. And I'm kind of still shocked because the coach is calling me. Um, He called me on the phone. He was like, well, we're going to take you in the seventh round. I was like, thanks, coach. You know, I can't wait to get to Jacksonville and play with you guys. You had Fred Taylor there. You still had – um, It wasn't Coughlin there, was it? Yeah, Coughlin was there. Yeah. Um, you had McCarty was still there. Gene McCardo, yeah. Those guys are – Jimmy. Uh, Jimmy, oh, yeah, yeah. Jimmy was see. there. So, you know, we had some studs there. And you still had um, – Mark Brunel was there Brunel, throwing the ball. Yeah. So, you know – he was a gunslinger too, so when I got there, I was like, uh, "I'm gonna put my foot around. Let's let's get this done, man." And you know, sad thing happened. You know, we went through camp, and the wide receiver coach was loving me, and everybody it was it was a good thing. I was the type of guy that would run when they start doing all the hazing, right? <laughs> so I would just go jump in the car or play the video games while they doing the hazing. So they figured that out after a while. They was like, "Hey, we got to get this guy." So they actually taped me up. Put me on a doggone stretcher, taped the ball to my shoulder, <laughs> pushed me through the crowd, <laughs> let everybody sign me, and then threw me in that. Oh, they autographed <laughs> you? Yeah, they autographed me, dude. It's like, put my name on it, yeah, then. Yeah, but they was cutting everybody else's beard off. They was cutting the mustache off. I was like, if they do that, wow. we fight. Oh, yeah, 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 right? yeah, yeah. So I was hiding all the time. So they just they just taped me up, made the whole crowd autograph sign me. But, you know, um, those, those were days of hazing. You know, you had a. A game we was playing Chicago Bears, and it came down to that last game for me to be drafted, you know. And the coach looked me in the eyes. He said, it's coming down to you and him. One of you guys got to make a play today. And by the, by the fourth quarter, men, this guy both had two catches and a couple of yards, right? right. And we going down on the last play. And I can remember this. <laughs> we get out there, it's kickoff. He's on the left of me. I'm right here. So I'm the guy that got to go bust the wedge over. So now I got to go hit the three guys, right? So I'm looking. I'm like, so to. me, I'm weighing like, 180 yeah, pounds. Yeah, bro. I'm, I'm only, yeah, about 180, 190 something. I'm like, I'm the wedge busters. And Chicago, we play in Chicago in Illinois Stadium. And they got they got four guys running that I got to bust the wedge through. <laughs> and I'm sitting here, and the guy that I'm going against, he's right next to me. 
I think he's the last guy on the end of the uh, kickoff team. He says, man, I don't even want to go down here and run. He's setting you up. And at that time, I <laughs> was like, I didn't, I didn't think about it. Only thing I'm thinking about, well, man, you better go hit this damn wedge, man, because I'm going to hit this damn wedge, right? So that took my – I was way up. I ran down there, man. I bust that wedge. Bow! I can remember it. Hit it, and I grabbed the running back by his foot. And because I had to run through those four guys, I had no more energy, no more strength to to get him down. So I'm I'm grabbing him. He's shaking. He shakes off. This guy makes the tackle. <laughs> Cleans up they the They keep him, yeah. dude. <laughs> they keep the guy. And I'm sitting. I'm screaming. The Some next, coach was like, "That's what we're looking for, right yeah. there." <laughs> and I'm like, "Dang!" So uh, I remember. I remember sitting outside Jack Jacksonville Jack Wall Stadium, just crying like a baby. Like my sister called me. She was like, "It's gonna be okay. You're gonna be picked up by somebody. It's gonna be okay." But you know, that day just showed me. You know, it. it you just gotta keep doing what you're doing. It doesn't matter. You know, they they kind of they picked him. He made the play, but he wasn't the reason why right. that play was happening. Right. You know, so but it was sour. And then, like I said, I went on to Europe, played over there, came on back from Europe. That was. Man, we had Tennessee. What happened? We got Tennessee. Well, Tennessee. Well, Tennessee. When I went to Tennessee, man, they um, it was real good because I was back home, you know, playing from M- Middle Tennessee State. I'm only, you know, thirty miles up the road, so everybody is calling like, "Hey, man, you're gonna do big things in Tennessee." Jeff Fisher called me in the office. He was like, "Hey, we, you know, we throw the ball here." You, know, McNair was there at the time. Mm-hmm. I wow. can remember McNair coming out. Man, he would he would just come out, and you know what what, what happened to him. You know, when I think about it, when he would just come out to practice and you just see him zip the ball, he was like, man, this guy, is a, he's a beast. He's that talented, you know. And, you know, just playing there, uh, what happened there with my career there, we had um, Javon Curtis got hurt in one of the games. I think he, he tore his thumb or he tore his hand. He broke his hand or something. And they had to release me and put – put a guy in that Create position for, for defense. Yeah. So I just got – I had two bad draws at the same time with the, with the NFL. And, you know, Tennessee was great. It, it was just short lived, and after that, I was just at home. You know, you know what I started doing at home, just you know, working out, trying to get back to the league, calling everybody, agents. You know, nobody's picking up, but you you're trying. And then I got a call to come to work out for the Miami Dolphins, and I was like, "Cool." Got Who makes that, that call? Do you well, even remember? I had my my agent make that call. I think oh, so he was, gets the call. Right. You just get the call. Yeah, I get yeah. I get the call from him. At the time, it was Drew Rosenhaus. Um, was um, my agent. He was like, hey, come on down. He got the workout for you. I went down, man, worked out, did real good. Noah Turner was like, hey, we're going to sign you. What you want to do? And I think communication kind of got dropped there. I got <laughs> I got on the – you know, I got back on the plane, got home. When I got home, it was like, hey, hey you going to Europe? I'm like, what? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. What's going on? I'm going to be going to Miami. I'm going to be in Miami. So apparently Norv and Rick Spielman were not on the same running scale. Yeah, that's what it was, <laughs> Rick Spielman. And I was like, what's up, Rick Spielman? So I'm talking to Rick. I'm like, you know, and before I know it, I'm going to Europe. So I go over there, you know, play great. We went to the championship. We did win it. I was a starter receiver on there. I had kickoff returns. I mean, Europe was Europe was a real. We're in Europe. We're in Europe. Right? I know. I know where you were, but Deucedor. yeah, yeah. I want you to tell. Yeah, fire, yeah. Mm-hmm. It was real fun, man. Because uh, just the energy of the field we played, where all the soccer guys played at, practice at. We ate real good. You know, man. I got back from over there and and walked through the Dolphins' door um, after a whole year of playing football. And um, Noah Turner said, where you been at? And I was like, <laughs> that's crazy. You mean where I, been? I was like, what the hell you mean where I been at? I said, you told me that I need to go to Europe. He said, I didn't tell you that. I never told you that. You should have been here. And just walked off. I was like, oh, shit. Damn. So I said, okay. So I talked back to everybody. He was like, well, I told you you didn't have to go. What do you think it did for you as a player? Did it better prepare you? Or was it just another year of? I think it prepared me. I think it, you know, more football you get is going to prepare you. It shaped me to be a better receiver and and a return guy. But I think in the long haul, it took a toll on my body that I didn't need. And I think that's what kind of shortened my career with uh, all the football I had played um, in Europe and then came right to camp and play and then played a whole football season of practicing. You know, OJ, you know, the practice, the season travel. From, a, from one season to another season, we went to a championship in a whole nother league. No matter if it was NFL ball or a grade level above, uh, lower than NFL ball, it was still NFL ball. Right, and just playing that whole season. After that, you know, I got here, got on the 53-man roster. But that next year, all of that football and camp and training, I ended up getting to the place where we were. I could have been the third to second receiver on the team. 
I end up tearing my Achilles, mm-hmm. you know. And when I tore my Achilles, that's when a lot of things just, you know, a lot of things start going the other way. You know, they didn't know if I was going to get back on the field, you know, what was going to happen. We was playing preseason. I remember telling my wife, well, I met with you, OJ, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> that was that was crazy because when I first met you, OJ, we went down to uh, Club Bed, man, and I was like. <laughs> I said, now we're talking. Yeah, it's like, I was like, damn, I, when I first got here, I met OJ, and I'm like, shit, well, what we going to do, OJ? OJ said, hey, come to the crib, man, let's go. I got a limo. Yeah, we jumped in the limo. Went on down to Club Bed, and, you know, we got in there, man, doing our thing. You know, we yeah. we, we hanging tough. We doing our thing. He said, he's talking about the bed. We had the bed right by the DJ booth always, yeah. man. Oh, and yeah. He had it. Oh. Yeah, man. We had it nice. We had it nice. He's talking about when he came to the house. I, I never thought about it this way, but the compound, the way, you know, the gates and the walls. The compound, that's a you resort. You never thought about that's, it that that's, a, that's a resort. That's not a compound. You got the gates. It opens up because you're in the middle of nowhere, right? Yeah, Horses right. running yeah, by and shit. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. then all of a sudden, you know, you hear the music, and there's the basketball court. Yeah, then he got those big lions running around there yeah. with those big dogs big running dogs around yeah. and they're, just, they're not there anymore <laughs> no, you know I, I really? got a little rescue dog now i had to, had to grow up a little man bit. when <laughs> i came over there man i was so surprised and shocked and i was like well look this is what this is what the league is putting out this is what i want to go this after this is the goal this is the goal you know and you know being around oj you know he just took he took me in he he saw i was hungry no, i saw him i mean yeah. was real quick i just saw him yesterday man i was like wait a minute like I, you know my old ass man then he started bringing back all these great memories man you know what i mean man. a young buck like that man who's who was so humble you know, and just such a, a, a nice kid, man, and, and willing to go out there and work, man. You know, because think about it, when he got there, I was done. You yeah. know what I mean? I was That's out of I'm league, looking at the you know? years. Yeah, I'm like, I was wow. out of league. Yeah, man. But, yeah, definitely, You man. weren't done club bed, you, but you were done. In the- <laughs> no, I wasn't done, I wasn't done clubbing yet. <laughs> no, no, no. We yeah, was man. in there. We was in there. Hey, yeah. man, that was times, man. Yeah. So, wait, but you met the missus on one of these? Yeah, we was. We, I mean, that. That whole day was kind of weird, man. We was just kicking it real tough, you know, just doing what we're doing in Miami and, and ended up in a spot, and I ended up meeting my wife at the, um, at the club bed, and we've been together for 15 years now, man. Great, so man. That's awesome. It's like, you know, with, for, for OJ, anytime I'm thinking about things like that, you know, anniversaries or anything, it's like, damn, that night was just orchestrated, but OJ is always going to be in that picture, you know what I'm saying? And that, we just story. happened to bump into yeah. each other at golf. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, That's wild. like real tight. It was, man, That's it was wild. crazy. But what's also wild is, listen, been in South Florida a long time. You have two juice. How many stories are there that, yeah, I okay. met my, <laughs> I met my wife on South Beach and we've been married 15 years. Ah, uh, man. Dude, uh, yeah, that's, 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 that's like hitting the lottery right that's there. A, yeah, that that is an anomaly. That's that's a, that's, man, that, you're killing that, it with the SAT yeah, words today. Right, man. <laughs> I'm gonna win it. I'm gonna win it. Yeah, man. I mean, it was just that whole, it was that whole vibe, you know. My wife is pretty awesome, you know. She's um from Freeport, Bahamas, you know, the things that's going on in Bahamas right oh, now. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, it's just been, hard for us to get down here and she made me really want to come down here to meet with back up with the guys to see what's going on That's because awesome. we, we need that yeah. we miss you guys man. yeah and it's it goes more than football you know it's like having your football family but then it goes more than that because you know we all get older we start looking at what we really want to do and you know just getting back down here alumni weekend seeing the guys being on fish tank talking about football just yeah. you know it's the energy that we need the motivation we need to keep doing better you know well he mentions energy juice and i you know so i left oh three was my last year i was there through the off season so i would have been with you oh three and then and through the off season and i remember kendall at that point i think you started on the practice squad right right and you know i, I would always hear the term fresh legs fresh legs and those guys but you know kendall's job was to kind of simulate whoever the best receiver was on yep, the other right. team every week and this dude you know athletic and long and making these plays and you just knew that there was going to be a ch- there, there was going to be a moment where you were going to get a shot yep, yep. you knew that moment was going to come but talk about you know and, and we were talking a little bit about it before you before we started the show here talk about the fact you know you kind of got that close you did get your chance there were some coaching changes and yeah. maybe we ran into a coach that you didn't necessarily see eye to eye with yeah we uh we had when i first got there it was um day wants and the defense was solid, man. You had Pat Sertain, Sam, uh, Sam Madison. You Going up against those guys. Brock huh? Maryland. So, listen, the defense was solid. Yep. You know, so I don't have to even go in that. You know, you had Jason Tay, you had Zach Thomas. Zach Thomas hitting you in the throat when you're coming across the dog on <laughs> the middle. I'm trying to fight him every day because, you know, I'm blocking him. And then you got Pat Sertain and Sam Madison jamming you all day. All day. You know, when I first got there, I'm coming from playing slot receiver. So I'm running against them, and bomb, he's jamming me. Coach telling me, oh, we're going to fire you if you can't get off the line of scrimmage. So I'm like, damn. 
All right. You got two so, of the best. Yeah, best I got two. I got two of the best. Of the game. Yeah, the history of game going against me, so they made me fight them really. So I'm, you know, trying to make my way, like you said, you know, every day I got to go up against them because I I have to play the the other receiver on the other team and give them a look. And I can remember when it really got tough, those guys started looking at me saying, hey, man, you don't have to go that hard. I'm like, shit, me. Yeah, you right. Yeah, yeah, I'm glad you, you I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going damn Good home for, for y'all, right? So, yeah. you know, we we fought. I tried to make them better, and that's what that's what a team player is. You, you make them better, they're going to make you better. But, you know, after Wanstead, man, we had Nick Saban come in the game, man. When he you got like, you, like Wands, right? Yeah, I like Wanstead. I think Wanstead was a really good coach, man. He's a really good person. You know, when I told my Achilles, I can remember talking to Wanstead in the um in the hallway the next year. He was like, "Damn!" He just looked at me. He was mm-hmm. like, "Damn, man, I want you on the field." He was like, "Damn!" And I could see it. You know, when you genuine, genuine, Jesus, a genuine yeah. like, "Damn, I hate that happened to you." So. You know, after he left, you know, you had some coaches changing. You still had some some receivers that was changing, the receiver coach that was changing. But you still had the nucleus of the guys, Chris Chambers, McKnight. You had, I think, David Boston that was coming in. David Boston. Wow. Uh, you had um, – For a cup of coffee. You no, know, Randy McMichael was the tight, tight end. end. You know, you can't remember the other – the running back that was there at that time. Travis Minor Travis was when Minor. Ricky left. Yeah, so Travis, Travis Minor. Was there. And then you had uh, Gus Farrat, Jay Feely, Jay Feeler. And then, you know, Nick Saban came into the picture. And, I mean, I think when Nick Saban got here, man, he was the wrong fit from the jump. You know, he just came in and, you know, he had everybody kind of in this, like, you know, you know, where do we go? We're, we're, we're definitely not 17 year old kids. Right. You know, and you can't talk to a, you can't talk to a grown man that's making the same amount of money as you or even more to put football on him as a, as a disciplinary type of situation when, he already loves football. He's he's become a pro at this. So you, you really the discipline part should have been strictly field oriented, not you know man to man type of discipline. You know, and I think that's what he kind of brought. He didn't bring the football discipline. I think he brought like I'm I'm the shit. Listen to what I'm doing. Listen right. to what I'm telling you. Right, right. And that was wrong. You know. So you're not know. a fan. No, I'm not really a fan of Nick Saban. No, the reason why is because I've had my in- encounters with him and. Still to this day, Nick Saban is the reason why I'm out of football. And he had the opportunity to um, say, you know, we're going to keep you on after your knee injury and let you get healthy and play. Or the things that he told me across the table was, you know, when I met him in the office, he said, Kendall, we don't have enough money to resign you. And I'm sitting there like, shit, I'm not the 25th, the 50th, or the, the, the second highest player played on his team. Why do, you, why you don't have enough money to resign me? So I didn't, I didn't really understand that, man. And, you know, I had just had a Achilles injury the year before, tore my knee up that next year. You know, I'm sitting anywhere from a two million to three, four million dollar deal if I don't get hurt. Right. You know, um, and then playing on that, being that third man or that second man, fighting for that second position as wide receiver. But he released me, and it was like I had Drew Rosenhaus as um my my agent, and everything just start falling apart. You know, you know my agents then was telling me, man, you might need to retire. I'm cussing them out every day, and and, and I'm looking at the season that Nick Saban is leading. You know, and I could have really helped the team. Right. And it's like, how can you not have enough money to pay a guy like me? That is probably would be. I don't know what you think, OJ. Probably what the way down the line of being like the f- salaries, yeah, yeah, salary, you absolutely. Know, at that time, absolutely. so it was just it was just real nasty the way I think Nick Saban dealt with it. You know, being that you know, and I think what it came down to was when I tore my Achilles, I went to to an outside doctor, and then when mm. I tore my knee, when he got here, he was like, "You need." I was always pressured that I need to stay with the Dolphins. Yeah, I'm doctor. glad you didn't. Don't fuck and that. I was like, I went to this guy. He fixed my damn Achilles. This guy should be able to fix my knee too. So why is it a problem? Right. So it, it got it got to where you know I can remember being in the doctor. Yes, you it know, is problematic. and that whole thing just went that way. And he was like, he don't have enough money to resign me. But you know, that didn't bother me as much as when he just up and left. Right. You know, it was like, well, damn, dude, you gonna you you gonna stick End to my your career gun. and then yeah, leave bro, after you two years? You gonna stick to your damn gun like that and just up and leave? So, you know, like I said, man, I see them. It's still problems. You know, it is, right. it's, it, it is what it is. People like that. When you're passionate about a football game, you know, I, the only thing I've ever had has been football, you know, growing up, other than my other passion is fishing. But 
football is you know football is football you know i, I mean we have fish tank i don't have to say no more you right. know yeah, we're that's the fish tank. i mean that story is true as anything you know so uh, and talk about that so there you are you know like you said you you're you're saying that nick is essentially responsible for ending your football career and i and and we talk a lot about this juice where that transition for guys even guys yeah. who had 10-year careers pro bowls the whole thing that transition from the game to not playing anymore is a challenging one so what at, at what point did you okay, I got to hang up the cleats and I'm picking up the fishing rod and then and turn it into what it has become for you now. Man, I'm going to tell you, that was that was some of the darkest, toughest time in my life. As a, I mean, because <laughs> the funny thing about it, after that conversation with Nick Saban, I was still hurt, so I couldn't really just go to another team. Right. So two weeks after that conversation, I'm released, I'm at home, I'm sitting here in Davie, Florida, in the townhouse, and I'm like, what the hell am I going to do? I got to get healthy. And my agents are are kind of walking away from me too. So I'm like, what do Shocking. I do? Shocking. Yeah. And so it's like best. I'm shocked now, and I'm like, oh my god. So I say, well, I got to make money. So now money is getting low, right? I'm like, oh my god. You know, now you're trying to shoo away from the guys because you don't want to. You know, you don't want to be confronted with, oh, you got released, and then they don't. They don't really want to talk to you either because they they concentrating on keeping their check, their dollar. You right, know, and right. it, it's just a weird. It's a weird space that you get in when, you, when you're in that situation, right? You know, you got these guys, they got millions of dollars, and you got these guys that don't have millions of dollars. And it's, it just, it don't gel. So after a while, I had to just start to find work. It was funny, man. True story. I started washing cars. Wow. And I was washing, I watched Pat Sertain car. I watched all these dudes. Wow. These dudes gave me jobs still. You understand what I'm saying? Because they understood it. You know, they was like, yo, and- for me, it was like, I don't want to ask you guys for no money. I work for my money, right. you know. So I started a mobile detail shop, you know, started just going around to different companies. You know, I made good money because I was, you know, I could go there and watch probably 30, 40 cars a day. Well, it's great that you created a business, but I also, like, to me, it's so impressive. There's a there's a level of humility you yeah. have to have there, right? Because yeah. some guys are too proud to do that shit. And then they sit at home, at home and have nothing. And you were like, "Hey, I'm earning it. I'm what, right." So you, yeah. you you weren't too proud to go and wash Pat's car, wash so and so's car, because hey, this is my business. This is what I'm doing. Well, you're, you're going to pay me, and I'm going to deliver a service. Self, the other thing was, man, where was I going to go get a damn workout at? You right. know, I had to either go pay somebody to work out. The Dolphins kicked me out where I couldn't go work out. Right. right. So I was thinking, like, I need this hard work, but I also need to make money. These guys. Oh, so the, you're saying the physicality the of physicality, it. physicality. I mean, I still was hurt. I barely could really watch the car. So I had to hire a couple of guys. I had, hired a five-man team just to keep it going. I didn't but, even know this. Yeah, yeah it was weird, right. man. I was right there. The funny thing about it, I was right, right there, there. Right across the street. Right across the street, down the street from the practice facility. With washing all this, cars. Washing cars. Watching my own teammates' cars. Your own teammates' cars. And yeah. guys were cool. Guys were they respectful. Was cool, they were they just, was cool. They, so you probably appreciated the business. Yeah, I, I appreciated them because it – but it made me see that separation of what I'm saying. Mm. The separation, you know, you got five guys, seven guys, OJ, going out for those positions at wide receiver. You want it as much as I want it, but I don't. I shouldn't hate you because you want it. I just got to go do my job. Right. So that's how I was looking at, you know, the car washing thing. I just need to go do my job. And these guys, they had my back. So Miami Dolphins is and the, and the team, the camaraderie, it, it went for me. It went way off the field. You know, it was a close yeah. knit team back yeah. then. We talk about it all the time, Juice. That yeah. that group of guys from probably mid nineties to the early two thousands, just a close knit group. Yeah, I mean, a lot of really good guys, man. And I think the organization does a really good job. And it's, it's good to see Kendall back, man, because you know we always yeah. want the guys yeah. to stay close, man, because we we have that camaraderie, and a lot of times we need each other to yeah. lean on each other, yeah. man. You talk about you know the way your career went here, but you know what thing that you do miss is the guys. Yep. You know what I mean? Yep. The guys that was yep. in the trenches with yep. you when you got when you were hurt, you when you're in the tub, you know, and you got guys that are, you know, still there for you, man. And yep. that, that's important. Especially like like for me personally, man, I, I always joke about there's only two fun days, and that's Sundays and paydays. That's that's the that's that's true. But also, man, missing the, that locker room environment. And that's what this show's about. Yep. You know what I mean? Be able to come in and tell the stories yep. and the stuff that you do anyways. You know, we yuck it up all the time. We yuck yep. it up on the golf course, you yep. know, telling stories, man. But yeah, man, it's it's important us guys emotionally and mentally to get back in front of the fellas, man. And yeah. I, you know, and I, I appreciate you telling all your stories, man, because Absolutely. you know, the, the stories go untold and people don't get it. Yeah. They don't get it, man. They think that you show up, you play a game, you make a lot of money. You should be grateful. 
they don't understand the backstories of all this shit, man. No, that's man. The thing, uh, that, that, that's crazy. I mean, because the Dolphins, no one, the people don't even know when I got married to my wife, Stu was the, was the chaplain. Stu did yeah, yours? Man. I know you're Jimmy Johnson. Yeah. You and Jimmy Johnson? Yeah, so it's like, I saw Stu at the golf tournament yesterday. I was I'm thinking, like, I just had to bust out laughing like, this is crazy. Yeah, man. And I awesome, haven't saw him in so Stu's long. So, yeah, I mean, we was tight. I, so those are things I'll never forget, you know, playing for the Dolphins. You know, the Dolphins is the, um, you know, only team that's been undefeated, you know, um, has a has a rich, rich, rich history here um, in Miami. You know, the guys are great. The wealth, I mean, everything about mm-hmm. the Miami Dolphins is great, man. I just, you know, I, I wish them luck this year. I, I hope that they can, they can right the ship and, and, and find something to fight for this year. You know, if it's just if it's just the team that they're going to fight for, the guys in the locker room, then they need to come together and fight for the guys in the locker room. Yeah, I, I, think that's, I think that's important, man, because no matter what, and look, I got bad blood with yeah. the way my career ended, the way your career was here, but we still show that love for this yeah. team, man, because we, we know what it's all about. We know it's not about the coaches or, you know, management or whatever. It's about those dudes in that locker room. Yeah. You know what I yep. mean? So that's Most good definitely. stuff. No yep. doubt. So, but I, I, I got to know, <laughs> we, can, we can't let you go without talking about this. So I talked to Kendall. I didn't know about the car washing story, but they started calling me. He said, hey, I'm fishing. I'm like, oh, shit, okay, he's fishing. Great. No, he's like, no, 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 competitive fishing. So, like, t- talk to us about that, man. How did you go so out of the league, I, this washing is what I, this cars? This I'm excited about right <laughs> here. I want to know about where did you start getting into f- competitive fishing and give our listeners a little bit of an understanding of what it is you do now. Well, guys, I've been fishing since I was, like, four years old. And I was fishing before I even picked up basketball or football. Um, my dad would take us all the time, and it just stayed with me all the way through high school, all the way through college. I was always the guy that they knew that on an off weekend or weekend, I'm going to be fishing, right? So um, when I got here, though, you know, Miami, I mean, it's fishing heaven. Yeah. Right? I, I mean, think. it's like it's Not that everywhere. I know shit about fishing. So, yeah. so, my boy just sent me these pictures, by the way. My boy there he is. Look at, oh, he look just, at him. Yeah, he just went out and got Ooh. a whole bunch of dolphins. There's some nice dolphins, too. See? Yeah. That's my life right now. <laughs> you know, like fishing, we can go all day about that. You know, f- listen. But you're not just a guy sitting yeah. out there on the on the patio or no, on the, on no, the pier. No, competitive. That's, I want people Real to understand stuff. that. So, well, how how I would get them to understand, I'm an angler. You know, it's like you, you're a wide receiver or you're uh, in fishing industry, I'm a professional angler. So I went from, so I'm a two sports professional guy like basketball, football, or baseball, football, like Deion Sanders. I'm a, I'm a guy that went from football uh, as a professional to a professional angler in, in bass fishing. And what I do is I travel the country sponsored by Bass Pro Shops to fish these tournaments to win money. Oh, that's awesome, man. So you're talking about. That's there. Wait, how'd you, what's how'd you, up, how'd right you, there? Wait a minute. Let's, let's, how'd you get there? Man, this is, it was a weird, it was weird because what happened was after all those injuries, when I first told my injury in my Achilles, I would just go fishing here all the time. Like, after um, surgery, I mean, after rehab, I would just go fishing, fishing. You know, it was always I wanted to do it, but I didn't want to do it this early. I wanted to do it after football, right? So then when I tore my knee, fishing, fishing, I was just – one day I was fishing, I was like, all right, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to learn everything I need to learn about professional angling. So while I was playing here, I went over to a Bass Pro Shops, and I met a guy that was a fishing guy. And he started to teach me all the different things that I needed to know to fish competitively. So after that, you know, after the season and everything didn't go good here with the Dolphins, and then I was out the league, I went back to home, to Atlanta, came back, doggone jumped back into fishing, and then I ended up starting a nonprofit organization called Teach a Child to Fish. And that was my passion. That's when you started reaching out to yeah, me. Yeah, that's when I started reaching out to you, and that's when I started going – really deep into the fishing because now it took me to trade shows, trade shows, boat shows. I started doing speaking engagements, putting sponsorship packages out there and landed with a guy and had an opportunity to go meet Bash Pro Shops at the corporate office. So when that meeting came about, I went, met the owner, Johnny Moores. I met um, some of the key um, top executives and they was like, hey, we, we, we're ready to get more kids involved in fishing. And I'm sitting awesome. there I got the only kids program in the whole room. It's like 50 people in the room. I got the only kids program. And I'm like, okay, he talking to me. So got the deal signed, got everything on. I mean, I dropped 42 K on a boat, you know, just Ooh. like, boom, I want that boat right there. Let me grab that because I knew how important the boat is. 
without the boat, you can't be a professional angler. So I was like, I want these these this company to know that I'm serious about being this professional angler. Cop the boat, you know, years went by, but every year I have nine to ten tournaments where it takes me from Florida all the way to New York and far as Texas, where I'm pulling this boat, traveling, staying in hotels, fishing big lakes like that. It's Damn. craziness. Yeah. That's what's up, craziness. man. It's sponsored up, man. I mean, this this industry is, is over a five hundred and eighty some billion dollar industry. You have anything from It's a real number. Yeah. You have anything from uh the boat manufacturers to hooks, rods, reels, t shirts, merchandise, clothing, oil products, everything. So through our foundation, we're trying to open that job market up to more diverse communities and, and just get people involved in you know the job place uh workforce in the fishing industry so you know i'm doing a lot of things in the industry when it comes to fishing salt water and fresh water do the dolphins do you come in for the fishing tournament i've been i've been so busy i have i'm right. just now kind of getting to where I've, i, I can that's get, a no-brainer I can get down me. here it's a no-brainer it's a lot of things it's, no <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, true that's true. it's <laughs> like it's like these things fit you know it's like you know even <laughs> it's true it, it just fit you know so like right now, I started a, a professional um, fishing league, so that's my new venture that I'm doing now. Where instead of me being the angler that's chasing the championships, now I'm building the league to get more more guys like me that want to fish yeah. and kind of be like the the Roger Goodell of the the bass fishing industry and allow this. But hopefully, to a little build. more popular amongst yeah, the anglers. you know, but you know, yeah, we'll, I'll be definitely popular. Everybody, they call me the fra- they call me the Kendall Newson. I'm their favorite angler, so that's my that's my speech. I like yeah, it. Right. You know, I like I'm their it. favorite angler. Yeah. Well, Parish is over here drooling. He, he clearly wants to go fishing with you because he yeah, doesn't get I'm to in. do it anymore. He love he he would show up. I I have a, a lake behind the house that I'm in and whatever, and I. I I don't want to see the water, <laughs> but he comes in there and says, "Hey, you mind if I bring a fishing rod, or whatever?" I know Juice likes to fish, yeah. So you guys should all go fishing. Are, I'd love to uh, see yo, the pictures. The I want no part go of it. Yeah, let's go. Yeah, you guys should definitely go fishing. Oh yeah, <laughs> I want no part of going. Fishing. I'm in. What you scared I'm, to take the hook? To just take, every, all of it. All, all, it's you just don't want so to touch the fish. Me. I don't want to touch it. I don't Bro. want to sit out there. <laughs> you get that tick on the end of the line. I don't want the fucking tick on the end of the line. I don't want to like. It's just so not me. It's really? Just, yeah, it's just not my mm. thing. It's just I, not I bet. Thing. I bet I could get you to yeah. like fishing. Man, I, I I will take you up on that bet. I can, <laughs> I can get you to like fishing. It's just some things I have to do. You know, I know. I like you guys. Like yeah, so, yeah, that yeah. part I like. But the rest of that shit, you guys can have. And then we'll just hang out afterwards. Man, I'm 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 so down, man. My my, <laughs> yeah. my son, my my kids love to fish. Oh yeah, Cam can have my spot. Yeah, we love to fish, man. So I'm definitely going to take you up man. on that. I'm, I'm gonna have a pro with me. <laughs> Come I, on, I can't catch sit out. There, oh man. yeah, we gonna catch him, man. You, don't you know, need to. that's right. what he's there for. Yeah, we 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 go out there, read those. See, that's the thing that I love about it. You know, it got to where you can read those depth finders, the uh, the um, GPS plotters, the way you can find your fish and things like that. It takes a game, man. Like football, right? You know, you go out there and you try to you try to beat two hundred anglers in a professional bass fishing tournament for sixty to a hundred thousand dollars, right? right? And it's all mental. It's really all mental, just like football, you know, as you get, you know, like I like to say, like Tom Brady, you know, he's a very mental guy. You know, he knows where he's throwing the ball. He knows what he's going to do. Same thing with fishing. You know, you might be casting over here 40 feet this way or 30 feet this way, but the fish are really right to the left of you where you should be casting at. And you got to make a pers- the right cast and you got to hit that rock or that stump under the water. You actually have to feel that stump. And if you don't feel that stump, you're not going to get bit. Wow. You know, the technical. Yeah, the technical. Right over my head. I'll so, tell you that much. So, so, how many dubs do you have? Like, what? How many first place? Or, or, or well, tell us about the success. I have a lot of fifth and seventh and thirteenth places. And, and they're they, paying those guys. Yeah, in the money. Yo, okay. yeah, in the money. Yeah, in the money. Yeah. Like a, like I play. Like like poker, often. I'll play. Yeah, yeah, you, yeah you, get me in the you, money. You get money, man. Like they pay top forty guys all the time. So I'm always in the money making my check. And you know, by me being a former NFL player, I know how to get on the road and do speakers engagements and do the uh, seminars to make my money there. It's so many different ways we make money in fishing. You know, commer- I've been in commercials. You just you just do it all. And let me ask you this. And so uh, uh, you're right. The angle of you being a former yeah. NFL player is really cool. I love that you say, I'm a two-sport. I say, I'm like Deion Sanders. I love that <laughs> shit. Yeah, man. But, um, and, and I don't know, completely ignorant here. But as far as you talked about the diversity earlier, yeah. uh, as individuals of color in that industry, yeah. um, what, what are we looking at there? It's a it's a it's a hard game because uh like I always tell people you can go to Walmart or Target and buy a fifteen dollar football 
right? And everybody can play with it. Where you can't, you you got to go buy a sixty thousand dollar boat to play in this game, right. and you got to have at least twenty five thousand dollars more for, more of gear to even play right. in the game. So it's a very expensive game. So um, you know, so, Afri- uh, African American d- dad is not going out and buying a forty thousand dollar boat. He's going to buy a forty thousand dollar car. So, so for your role, like as a professional angler, yeah. would you say uh, that it's that, that the percentage of of black male professional anglers anglers are? I mean, are, is there a lot? Is it a small percentage? Is it a growing percentage? It's a growing percentage from what it used to be. You know, when I I know when I first got in, you know, Ish Monroe, Ish Monroe was there. Ish Monroe's been there for a long time, and he's kind of like the guy. That has been there for the last 15, 16 years, you know, leading the way. And then you have Mark Daniels Jr. coming up. You have you have a lot of guys. I, I would say top level, top, top, top level, you probably have at least seven to ten guys. And that's not enough in this industry. Wow. Yeah. You know, and that's including myself in those seven to ten guys. And is guys. that something yeah. that's important to you as well? Yeah. Not just for the youth, but just for people of color. For for young kids to see, hey, here's someone who looks like me who could be successful. Yeah, doing I think I think, you know, I think it's for all kids too, because you know, the the fishing industry is a weird kind of place. You know, it's like you like like yourself, you would do it or you love it. Or you won't do it, right? Yeah, so the, I'm, I'm the, on the won't category. Yeah, the, yeah but, but the younger you right. are, the younger you are, you'll do it, right? You you know, if you was five, six, seven years old, you'd do it, and you, you wouldn't think about it. So fishing is almost like participation. You know, that's sure. where that's where you get the numbers from. So that's why I started the, the program, to engage the kids first. You know, and then now that I've been engaging them for 11 years, okay, now you're 17, you're 20. Yeah. Do you want to fish in this professional fishing league? So if you got the itch here and you really want to do it, you have a place to go. So what's what's been in the industry, you don't have a place to go. You don't have those entities anywhere that's set like that. Um, Bass Masters, um, FLW, Major League Fishing, they are really concentrating on, um, you know, some youth things, but they're really concentrating on the pro angler, Mm -hmm. you know, uh, on the diversity side, you know. And if you don't have a guy that looked like me that came through, the, the levels that I've come through to understand from from the NFL to this industry, then um, those kids are not going to pick up a pole because they don't see anybody look like that. I think that's important because you think about – I was just thinking, I think Tiger Woods. Yes. You know, how, like he, how he changed it for guys like myself to go out there and actually want to play golf. I never wanted to play golf ever. You know what I mean? But you see Tiger out there and, and the way the, – the gear and, you know, just a, you never really saw black guys on the on the course. You know what I mean? But then now everybody picks yep. up the sticks, you know? And um, you know, and guys been guys guys that aren't black been doing it for a long time. And they were out there making money, doing business deals and everything like that. I think it's the same situation, man. You got to have somebody, you have to start it somewhere. Yep. And I keep Kendall, I mean that's a that's an awesome start for a lot of guys, man, to get an opportunity. You know, and I'm sure that, you know, your program is for black, white, yellow, green, whatever, yeah. it doesn't matter. Yeah. All kids. But if you yeah. can get people of color out there as well, that's a that's a great start for them to start something completely different than what we're used to as as well. As black. I tell you what I did, OJ, when I been doing this um, foundation for five or six years, I started to see, you know, you take a group of kids out to the lake, you take a group of kids out to the pond, but then you start realizing that, dang, those kids can never get in a bus and go to that pond. Right. Right. The those barriers kids, to entry. Those, are yeah, so those kids bad, in yeah. that in that that Opelika, that that city, that city of Miami, they you know really down there in the in the trenches, in the in the hoods, in in the, in the, in the you know the hard areas of these inner city, they'll never get to that point. So I was always reaching a lot of kids, but I was never reaching those kids that was really you know um, disadvantaged, right. you know, just kind of left out. So what I did, man, I said I'm gonna build a mobile fishing pond. And I said, yeah, I built a mobile fishing pond. So this mobile fishing pond is um, 20 by 14. Literally like catching fish in a barrel. Yeah. So what I did, it's (laughs) about 20 by 14. And it's it's, it's, it's probably like um, two feet tall. Preach wants you to bring it by his crib. Yeah, it's cool. (laughs) I'm bringing it down here for the Super Bowl. So we're going to set it up. That's wild. Yeah. Well, we need to do a fish tank show from the mobile fishing pond. Yeah. That's what I'm trying. I just can't talk about fishing. I'm trying to get this thing done. And. You know, we put 300 catfish in it. The kids go crazy. Wow. They catch some catfish right down the street from where so they live. So they're experiencing that success. Right in their city. That's so cool, You know, man. we had a we had a 1,000 kids come out at the um, Mercedes-Benz Stadium in Atlanta um, at the Home Depot backyard for three days. We had over 1,000 kids come out and catch fish. Their first fish in that pond. Oh, that's what's up. That's so cool as hell. That's Even the difference. For me. Yeah, that's the difference that we have to make. We, we 
I, I realized that I, I can't get these kids to go to an hour away. You got to take it to them. You're bringing gotta, it to them. I got to take You're it bringing straight it to, to them, them, Kendall. That's amazing. That's, that's, I'm, I'm very excited about that, bringing that down here, and I would love to get Fish Tank and us doing our thing we around that Count around us that in, bro. Yeah. yeah. I love it. So if somebody's listening right now, and they're not like me, they're obsessed with fishing, and mm-hmm. they want to help out, where, yeah. How do they find the work that you're doing? So if they wanted to support the work that you're doing. They would just go to T-A-C-T-F. That's teachachildtofish.org, T-A-C-T-F.org. You can find me there. Um, email, you got the phone number there. Um, drop us a comment. You want to make donations or whatever you want to do, whatever you want to talk to, just put it in the comment box and we'll get back to you on it. It's awesome, Yo, man. Congrats on the work you're doing. Killing it, man. You know? Okay, man, that's what's up, man. I really, appreciate really y'all having show, me man, on man. this thing. It was man. great to see on, you, man. man. I'm so glad movie, that you man. were here. Thank you. Thanks for diving in, brother. You're now diving into the fish tank. Sitting down with Seth living, Seth. OJ, Juice, Juice man, ooh, and this is strictly for them true fans, yeah. golf fans, number one, one, of course, y'all, this ain't no ordinary sports talk, dive up in that fish tank, go get your aqua orange, yeah, it's time to dive up in that fish tank, it's only legendary talking when you dive up in that fish tank, rocking with OJ and Seth when you dive up in that fish tank, Okay, this one for them diehards Celebrate big or cry hard Leave it all on the field, we gon' try hard Old school, a new school, mix it in Feeling like we up close when we listening Dolphins tales, in Miami is the deep end We vibing with our favorite players, no secret We get with Seth and McDuffie Bringing up stories we never heard to the public Bet we love it, Dolphins fans never budget We loyal to the team, wasn't happy and we upset We be like, what's next, don't switch the subject You know it's all about them fans And if you ready for that water, time to dive in Don't switch the subject, you know it's all about them fans And if you down with Dolphins Nation, time to dive in Don't switch the subject, you know it's all about them fans You looking at that fish tank, it's time to dive, dive in, in. That fish tank. Go get your aqua orange, yeah, it's time to dive up in that fish tank It's only legendary talking when you dive up in that fish tank Rapping with OJ and Seth when you dive up in that fish tank Don't ever add a token when you dive up in that fish tank